You've made some quite uh, remarkable films in your career. I mean, what makes you think when you kind of come across a screenplay, this is one that I want to take on? What was it about this Stephen Knight screenplay that yeah, did that for you? Yeah, well, it's usually always, and in the case of this one, it's, it's always um, you know being drawn in by the characters and the way the characters are, are written on the page and the, and, the, and the dilemma that they're in and the story that, they're, that you know, unfolds from that. And that's what happened on this film. It was a compelling story. And do you recall going on that same journey that the viewer goes on when we're watching this, where you never really know who to trust and what to believe? Yes, I mean, and that, and that, and that, and that was something that I had to understand from the beginning. Is that you know this is that, that was the thing that attracted me to the story when I read it the first time, and I thought, well, that's what I have to maintain throughout. And I mean, one of the things I loved about this was the the, the look of it, the costumes, the lighting. It was just something very, very sort of classic Hollywood mm -hmm. about it. Was it quite uh, difficult to, to have that kind of balance, right? Where it was quite affectionately kind of in line with kind of classic Hollywood movies, but it never felt like a pastiche. Yeah. Uh, well, you never want to do that, of course. Um, but you know, I was inspired by the screenplay. I mean, the screenplay evoked that feeling from the from the beginning, and it. And it and I thought that, well, you know, this is what I'm attracted to in this, and it's what I have to present on the screen. But you're right, you don't want it to ever be so self-conscious that, you know, you think that you're, you're, you're you know, co you know, copying something that was done in, in the past. And is that what inspired the, the decision to have it in Casablanca? Always in the screenplay, uh. <laughs> you know. Um, you know, that was always in the screenplay, and, you know, it's the appropriate place, because Casablanca was a very interesting, um, very interesting, uh, uh, city in the 1940s. It was full of intrigue, very complicated place. I mean, when you've got telling a story like this, so much is about the kind of subtlety and nuance of, of the actors, where it's all about the slight glances, what's going on inside their mind as much as what's coming out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it must be, it must help matters kind of immeasurably when you're dealing with Marion Cotillard and Brad Pitt. When you've got those two sort of actors at, at, at sort of leading this production, it must get, sort of take a real weight off your your mind yeah I mean it's always magnificent to have actors that are this talented and, and, and know exactly what they have to do when I present exactly a situation like that the, you know the complicated things that are going on inside the mind and heart of the character at that moment and you know and, and, and by the way now I want you to present that in a look I mean, it's very difficult to do, and it's very, it takes great talent. And one of, the, one, of the great, one of the most important things as well when you're dealing with a romance of this nature is to have that chemistry between them, which they, they've got considerably. I mean, how do you, do you, do you have to kind of audition, not audition them together, do you have to kind of see them together? How do you know two people are just going to work? Well, it's interesting because there's this thing we call the magic of the movies. Um, and on-screen chemistry is one of those bits of magic. Um, you know, I, I have to be perfectly honest, I mean, sitting at the rehearsal table with the two of them working for three weeks before we got on the set, I had no idea. Uh, it's something that happens once a lens is involved and, they, and, the, and the two actors become two-dimensional. Then that's where you can see the on-screen chemistry and, that only ha and, and they either have it or they don't. And there's nothing that a filmmaker can do to, to impose that on, um, on, on the movie. It was a good thing they did. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's good. That, yeah. And I mean, I really loved the. I was I speaking to Graham before as well about this depiction of London. I felt quite unique because so often when we're dealing with films set during the, the Second World War, it's very kind of gloomy. It's all. It's very kind of a desolate landscape that we mm -hmm. enter into. But there's something quite uplifting about the people. Mm -hmm. There's that kind of um, strength in the face of adversity. Was it quite important to get that spirit across? Um, for me, it was because I mean, in Stephen Knight's screenplay, it was very clear that he that he was evoking that feeling that you know. Uh, it was this, um, you know, love of life, in, you know, at the moment of death kind of, um, you know, fatalistic feeling that um, the, um, the uh, screenplay had. And so I thought that was very, very interesting and very unique, and I wanted to keep that and present that on the screen. In various films across your career, you, you balance so many themes in, in, in one movie, and in this film, it, it's feels particularly the case, obviously you've got this kind of espionage, kind of mm -hmm. thrilling aspect, and there's some scenes are incredibly suspenseful, but at the core of it's a real romantic narrative. Was it always a bit of a challenge to ensure that you gave every kind of different sub-genre, every kind of theme, their own yeah. kind of space to, to come out? Yeah, you have to you have to balance it, and it's a, it's a question of balance, but obviously um, the most important element of the, of the story was the emotional core of the two characters and the, and the, and their, and their, and this passionate romance that they were that they were in, and this complicated life that they had, that had to always be in the foreground. And then, of course, that the, having the war as a backdrop just made the stakes higher and made everything more complicated. Uh, next up is you got the Women of Marwen with Steve Carell. Yeah. What can you tell us about that movie? Is it, when does it uh, get started? Well, it gets started shooting in the summer, um, and it's uh, you know very complicated story about a very complicated man and 
it's full of uh, comedy and action and pathos and um, suspense and I think it's uh, I think it's I, it's so impossible to describe. Uh, and just fine. I mean, you recently awarded the French Order of Arts and Letters. Yes. Congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. I, I mean, it's obviously this is looking back of your whole career. We're coming out to sort of forty years since your, mm -hmm. your first right. uh, production. I mean, have you reached a point in your career where you, you do like to look back, or are you, are you always just focused on very much on the present day and the future? I, you know, looking back is uh, looking back is uh, you know is it, 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 you know it fills you with a sense of pride and accomplishment. Um, but you know, um, you know, the problem with filmmakers and maybe all artists, um, you know, I always feel like I haven't done my best work yet. <laughs> you know, it's always that feeling that's always gnawing at you. Well, that's quite exciting to hear as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well thank you so much for your time thank today. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.